The fibers of reality were unraveling. Felix stood glaring at the sky, which was suddenly a pitfall beige as all of the colors were leaving the universe. All the strands of which it was made were being shredded by forces beyond comprehension. The ground began to shake, then slowly disintegrate. Buildings were being plucked from their base and flung into the beige that continued paling in color. Felix was rolling his camera, mindlessly trying to capture everything that was happening around him. He would capture the expressions of the humans of this world that were inexplicably dreamy, somewhere beyond life and death. Their bodies levitated listlessly, as if they were being pulled out of sleep without waking and not torn out of their reality and thrown into oblivion. The earth beneath his feet became like quicksand, so he swiftly leaped towards the group of people gathered next to a structure that was the only one still standing, still whole. They were also the only ones awake and actively trying to save themselves. The noise was unbearable, as if all the sounds of the universe were spliced into a single track, a song of the end times, the dance macabre. Felix felt a tug on his suit and heard a familiar voice speaking to him. What do you mean? You can see me? He asked in return. He was shocked. Naturally. The voice blabbered a response in its terrible tongue that took Felix quite a while to learn. Since when? He pushed, fidgeting with his multifacet suit, searching for damage or some kind of malfunction, which would explain why he was visible to him all of a sudden. There were none. For the decade that you've been in this universe, said the man whom he'd known for the exact amount of time mentioned. Unbelievable! I was so careful! Felix was stammering. His voice was cracking in anger, as if the man was to blame for his lack of skill and perceptiveness. The man and his kin, whom Felix had named the Doomers, were much more intelligent than what he had surmised in his research of them. He underestimated them grossly. Suddenly, the high pitch of an alarm broke out from the intact structure. The man, the one Felix would call Giles, was begging him to move, motioning toward it with the fervor of utmost panic. Attention, this is not a drill, we must evacuate. He was repeatedly telling Felix over the sound of the alarm blaring from the structure in all directions. It could be heard for kilometers on end, bringing back every doomer to what had become their escape pod, as well as their generational ship. I will not come with you, Felix responded to the plea. I need to get back to my sphere. I need to get back to my own vessel. But Giles was adamant. He knew that there wasn't any more time left, and that if Felix wouldn't come with them instantly, he too could have perished along with the collapsing universe they were trying to flee. Once he saw that everyone from his kin was on board the ship, Giles smacked Felix over the head, breaking through his helmet like it was nothing, then dragged his unconscious body inside. After a few moments, the researcher woke up in a quiet little chamber with a single bunk. His ears were ringing, and his body felt light as a feather. He tried standing, but the only thing he could do in the tight confines he was dumped in was to perch up a little and crawl toward the small porthole on the side. The first thing he saw was the jagged edge of the structure, Giles' ship, protruding from the hull. Their very ends were sparkling and shimmering, which helped Felix conclude that they were emitting some kind of force field. What he saw beyond that only confirmed his conclusion, for without a force field or a shield of any kind, the chamber he was in would not have been so quiet. Its hatch opened, and Felix didn't even turn to see who had entered. His face was all but pressed to the porthole. His eyes widened and stared at the sight so impossible and petrifying that he would never recover from. Giles turned back and closed the hatch behind him, vowing to return for his guest when they would reach their new destination. Felix heard none of it, 
nor did he care. An entire universe was collapsing before his eyes, being erased from reality, remaining only a memory to him and the people that had taken him so graciously on board. Felix had never witnessed such a thing, but he wasn't quite the experienced traveler as some of the other anthropologists from his home universe. This had only been the first pocket universe he had visited from the countless ones in the multiverse. The first instance of humankind he had observed on location and studied from a parallel reality to his own. The multiversal traveler was parting with his ship, his single way home, stranded somewhere in the dust of the disintegrating planet, solar system, galaxy. Felix was now stuck with the Doomers, the other humans that looked exactly like him, but were nothing like him, or so he thought, for they as well did not belong to the universe that faded into obscurity, folding from reality, blinking out of existence. Felix was left in the chamber for a few hours with only despair as his companion. Once the ship had breached through the dimensions and was on its way into another reality, he couldn't see anything else from the porthole except the blackest black that could ever possibly be. It looked dense, gooey, inexplicably living, and somehow like death itself. This was naturally an illusion that his mind was making so that what he could see would have anything close to an interpretation. The truth was that the space through which the ship was moving wasn't space at all. There was a knock on the hatch, followed by a squeak of someone opening it. Felix finally turned and saw Giles's face peeking from behind the rusted metal. Come inside, please. Felix spoke softly, his voice was trembling. Was that what you were preparing for? Did you always know that your universe was doomed? Giles entered and sat on the bunk next to Felix. It's more complicated than that, I'm afraid. With that, Giles had started explaining what he knew of the universe they had fled and why he and the rest had found themselves there at all. The researcher was flabbergasted. He listened for hours as this human being, a multiversal traveler much like himself, explained in detail how his colony got lost in the multiverse. Felix was sent to research them as if they were part of the collapsed universe, not as guests there too. There had been many of us at the beginning of the Exodus. Our ancestors had started with many ships, filled with all the remaining humans in our primary universe before it had itself collapsed. Giles looked out of the porthole for a moment, then back at Felix, who was fixed on his every word. There are no records about how they knew of the imminent collapse, nor why they split us up into groups. Mine had started with twelve vessels, and we now only have… One, Felix finished his sentence. They weren't doomsday preppers, as he was led to believe by his native institution that gave him charge of the anthropological research on them. Either the Institute of the Multiversal Anthropological Sciences was wrong, or they purposefully restricted the specific set of information regarding the Doomers that they gave him. These people were more like the riders of the apocalypse than preppers for it, infinitely lost between a multitude of universes that all had collapsed as they passed through them, without ever knowing why or even how. I'm not a psychist. But are you sure that your presence there isn't causing fluctuations in the closed system of these environments and collapsing them? By the addition of you, are you not disrupting the delicate balance of matter in these universes? That you, in fact, are not the reason why they are being erased from existence from the greater reality of the multiverse? Felix tried to understand what Giles was telling him, but the only thing that he managed to do was insult him terribly in the process. Giles stood up in a fury and bumped his head on the low ceiling. He was yelling, and Felix could barely make out what he was saying anymore. However, he did understand that Giles had asked him the same question in return. Are you not yourself as well, a disruptor? No, Felix thought to himself. 
impossible, not with his technology or for the limited amount of time he would spend in other universes. The Doomers would stay for generations, not mere decades like his own. The host exited into a small chamber, leaving the hatch open this time, as if to invite Felix to follow him if he so wished. They had arrived in another reality, parallel to what they both knew, but somehow vastly different. The ship was on high alert. No one dared leave. No one ever mentioned sending out a team to scout the new universe they were invading. Fear permeated every millimeter of the enormous vessel. Felix found himself standing in the middle of the main deck of the ship, surrounded by worried scientists and engineers, with no command officers or even leaders to decide for them. They hadn't shared a hierarchical structure in their society, like every other humankind populating the vastness of the multiverse that he had read about in the great library of his institute. They were all on equal footing, all making decisions together as a collective until no stone remained unturned in their debate. He didn't want to impose at first and took the time to understand everything that was being said among the Doomers. All of them acted as if they'd been used to his presence there. To make that even clearer, he was still wearing his multifastic suit that was operating in peak condition despite the damage on the helmet. They had all known him by now, seen him, despite the suit, he was almost one of them. Suddenly, one of the women, Michelle, as he used to call her in his papers, turned to him and asked for his advice on the matter that they were discussing. Um, the dangers are vast, he said. All were glaring at him, expecting a more substantial observation of their current situation. He coughed nervously, chuckled, then continued. <clears throat> However, going out of the ship and on the surface of Earth is what I would always suggest. He spoke with conviction, even though he had only visited one parallel Earth to his own, unlike his hosts. Maybe we shall find there what you seek. Technology similar to your own, if I understood correctly? Oxygen for your reserves as well? They all went quiet for a moment, making Felix very uncomfortable. The conditions on the Earth where they had landed were far different than the one they were on previously. They would have to use suits and air from the ship's reserves, not to mention potentially sacrificing their people to a hostile universe and a hostile Earth. Our guest is right. Giles spoke up and broke the awkward silence on deck. There's always the possibility that our scans are incomplete. Maybe we'll find these humans hiding beneath the ground, like we have many times in the past. And maybe we won't find anything at all, Michelle returned. I advise against it. We're already at capacity with the additional person on board. Felix winced. He suddenly realized how much he cost the people of the mighty multiversal vessel. We can squeeze a bit more from our reserves, Giles interrupted. I urge you to see my perspective, friends. The conversation continued a little while longer, and much to Michelle's chagrin, the Doomers had decided in favor of Giles. Within seconds, Felix was stammering questions at an engineer who was fitting him with a new suit and mounting an oxygen tank on his shoulders. Since the idea was his, Giles had volunteered him to be part of the scouting team that would leave the ship first. His new friend would join him, together with Michelle and Simone, an ecologist who would survey the habitability of the planet. Felix felt like he would suffocate in the suit, even though he was told that all was up to standard. Seeing how shaken he was, the engineer that was helping him released a second gas from his tank by the press of a command on his arm. Instantaneously, Felix was more relaxed and somehow sharper and more focused. The drugs, he thought. Giles' people were masters in pharmacology. Their daily lives wouldn't be possible without a touch of gas through a breathing tube or a well-placed patch on the shoulder. Not after everything they'd been through. He had witnessed this in their behavior even before he knew who they really were. He just never expected to experience it firsthand. Suddenly, Felix had no qualms about exiting the ship and stepping into the unknown. 
and an unknown this earth truly was. Felix was listening to the comms chatter between Giles and the two others, slightly giggling because he knew that without the drug, he would have been running back inside in a heartbeat. Everything was dark, with a slight orangish glow to it, as if rampant fires were burning all around. The ground was dense, hard and charred, crunchy under his step. There was nothing in all directions, apart from dark black mountain ridges that looked as if they were releasing steam into the atmosphere. Simone could be heard through the comms explaining how this earth had never reached habitability. Something went wrong in its formation, she said. Look, up there. Felix tilted his head up, and through the dense and dark clouds, he could see a small patch of sky, rings. He saw the rings of a massive planet instead of the bright reflected luminescence of the moon. A planet like Saturn was orbiting around the Earth, or was it the other way around? The incoming transmission from the ship had confirmed it. This Earth wasn't an Earth at all, never made it there, never bore the life that he and the people that snatched him from the other universe before its demise knew of. It was just a rocky planet orbiting a gas giant. It was itself a moon. Felix was giggling, even though his mind was screaming in panic. Such Earths and universes were never addressed by the Institute, theorized about, surely, but never openly spoken about. The implications that it would have had on their anthropocentric ideology would have been insurmountable. He almost fell over if it had not been for Michelle to hold him in place and administer another dose of the gas. Thank you, he uttered. Are we going back to the ship now? She shook her head. Of course not. Since they were already there, they needed to collect additional data for the maps of the multiverse they were creating, as well as for their sophisticated algorithm that could calculate if they were on the safe side when entering a new universe. They had lost 11 ships in hostile universes. They had none left to spare. Felix turned away from the rest of the team and remembered that he had fought with the engineer over taking his camera during the extravehicular activity on the surface. He switched it on, realized he hadn't much battery or room left to record, and decided for a single panoramic shot of the vicinity around the ship. He found an elevation, a pitch black boulder away from the entrance hatch so he could avoid the lights of the ship, gauged the length of the shot, and eventually captured the likeness of the strange planet that could have become an Earth, as if he would ever return home to archive the image in their library. Once he was done, he heard Michelle on comms. Incoming volcanic activity in the area! Retreat! She was warning the small scouting team and the ship, then suddenly came into Felix's view, running at full speed. Michelle was being closely followed behind by Giles and Simone, who were coming in and out of comms, yelling at him. Get off the rock! Sprint to the ship! With his bulky new suit, which he still wasn't completely adjusted to, his camera in both hands and the slippery rock beneath his feet, it was more than inevitable that he would crash on the hard ground below. When he raised his head, he saw Michelle trying to lift him and Giles coming over to help. However, somewhere in the distance, just before the black stone of the mountain ridge, Felix saw something moving. No, it was running. Whatever it was, it wasn't Simone. It had been moving toward them with immense speed and agility. Neither Michelle nor Giles were interested to hear his ramblings about it. They needed to get back into the ship and raise their force field before the nearby volcano would erupt, potentially damaging their vessel and stranding them on a planet without breathable oxygen. The most important commodity in any kind of travel away from a bountiful atmosphere. In a matter of moments, the four were back on the ship and the force field was raised around them. 
with the hatch closing slowly, the air outside becoming more opaque as the volcano was beginning to release its deadly fumes. Felix was staring out into the direction of the mountains, trying to discern if there was any movement there still. What he saw could have been chalked up to anything on the surface, or his state of being for that matter. But before he could make an accurate observation, the hatch was completely down, and the ship was engaging the special drive which allowed them to travel between realities without moving a single centimeter. At the very moment of takeoff, there was a horrible slam against the ship and a bellow like no other that Felix had ever heard. What was that? Nothing. The volcano. Or the ship adjusting. Simone answered, seemingly unbothered by the sound. But Felix was unconvinced. Not with the shield raised, he couldn't hear the sounds of a dying universe from inside it previously. Why would he ever be able to hear a meager volcano? As soon as he was back in his small chambers inside the massive cross-dimensional vessel, Felix was on his camera and using the remaining battery power to open the panoramic image of the surface he had captured. At first glance, he didn't see anything unexpected. He had even captured the very beginning of the eruption. However, upon closer inspection, he saw something that made his blood curdle. He hurried to the main deck in a frenzy as the ship was moving through the gooey black and found Simone at one of the consoles, already going through the data she had collected. Ma, mon he stammered. Aliens! Simone heard him, and without even turning towards him, brought up an image she had taken of the surface. Unlike his own, this one was sharp, zoomed in precisely on the object it was capturing. Felix's jaw dropped. The thing he thought he saw looming in the darkness beneath the mountain ridge was living indeed, though not an alien, and it wasn't the only living being present at their previous destination. It had been one of many. Simone was flipping through images, each one showing more of the like of the ghastly beings. They weren't even close to humans in appearance. When one of them was standing, it looked like a dark, slithery praying mantis with elongated legs and a revolving head without a face. Giant in size, at least twice the size of a human. Felix gasped all of a sudden. The last image in Simone's camera roll was of him, standing on top of the boulder next to the ship, taking his panoramic shot. Underneath him, was one of the creatures bundled up in a defensive position, mimicking a huge boulder. It shattered Felix's illusions in an instant. Aside from the fear that surged through his body like ice with the realization, this was the first time he had encountered creatures that weren't like any of the terrestrials he had known about. He never knew there was anything other than that occupying the greater reality that his race had traversed for centuries. Felix had discovered at that moment that evolution didn't always streamline the same species in the multiverse. The Doomers had known that for quite a while. Moreover, he was lucky that they didn't end up in a universe where the Earth had never existed plopping into the vacuum of space on a ship that wasn't designed for that. Lost and confused, Felix staggered back to his chamber and fell into a deep, dreamless sleep. He was beyond tired. He was left to rest and regain his energy for a few days, while the Doomers were calculating and recalculating the coordinates for their new destination. They were in desperate need of oxygen. Warning! Unidentified terrestrial on board. Warning. Felix was startled to wake up and jumped up from his bunk, smashing his forehead on the ceiling. The alarm was blaring again, and the onboard AI was warning of a danger less pressing than a collapsing universe, though almost as terrifying. Attention, this is not a drill. All hands in defensive formation. Warning. The hatch cracked open. Stay here. Whatever you hear in those corridors, do not move from this chamber. Michelle had peeked inside, yelling at Felix, then slammed the hatch shut. 
He blinked a few times and immediately turned to look out of the porthole behind him. There was sky outside and tall buildings. They were already on a new earth and no one had come in to inform him. Surely, he thought, the terrestrial the AI was going on about wasn't him. Was it from the new earth? Curious, Felix crawled out of the bunk, itching toward the single entrance. He was a bad guest, even worse at taking orders. He pressed his ear to the hatch first. Silence. The alarm had stopped, and Michelle was already gone. He turned the rusted knob of the hatch and could hear it echoing in the empty corridors outside. A grin flashed over his lips as he was getting ready to open it. He would never get the chance. Warning! Unidentified terrestrial located in zone 3-4. All hands in the vicinity proceed for capture. Nanoseconds after the AI voice stopped, Felix heard the bellows of the same inhuman voice that had frightened him when they were retreating from their previous location. It reverberated through the corridors and was coupled with crazed running and screaming coming from the doomers. Ready? Fire! Felix heard Giles's voice somewhere in the commotion that was happening very close to his chamber. It was followed by a barrage that sounded like plasma weapons. His hand was on the knob of the hatch. It was unlocked, with only his body pressing it closed. He was shaking, but his ear was still pressed on the cold metal. Suddenly, the inhuman voice bellowed just on the other side of the hatch. Before Felix could retreat, move, or do anything, a massive body started pounding on the metal, cracking the hatch open with each blow. Felix was pressing it shut as best he could, all the time feeling like he was losing the battle. Again! Giles called out, and the plasma scorching the terrestrial in the corridors was streaking through the cracked open hatch into Felix's chamber, almost burning him to a crisp as well. Fire without prejudice! There was another blast, and the pounding on the hatch had stopped instantaneously. Felix waited for a moment, and when he heard footsteps coming close, he relaxed a little and let go of the metal that stood between him and whatever terrestrial now lay dead on the other side. The body that was propped on the hatch was so massive that the moment Felix released his grip and moved away, it pushed it open, slumping inside the chamber. When Giles and Michelle showed up to peek through the hatch and see if he was harmed in the battle, they found him squeezed in the opposite corner of the chamber, grabbing his knees and pulling them toward himself. The body of the creature was still sizzling and steaming on the floor at the entrance. It was the praying mantis look-alike that they had captured an image in the previous reality. Good news, friend! Giles smiled. We found an Earth with a breathable atmosphere. It seems it's also populated by humans. That wasn't the way Felix expected to be informed that they'd reached a new destination. Michelle side-eyed Giles and told Felix what he really needed to hear to relax. She understood that dealing with creatures like the corpse on the floor wasn't something he was accustomed to like they were. It's dead. And it was the single one that got through before we raised our shield. Felix looked into her eyes and saw the reassurance there also. He finally exhaled the breath he had been holding for a moment or so. We've scanned our present destination for its species. They're not adapted to this kind of atmosphere. Only humans and a few other species are present. She added, When you've recovered, you can join the two of us and Simone for a scouting mission again. I expect you'd want to survey these humans for yourself. Giles commented. As they were speaking, other doomers had joined them in the corridor. They had already started hacking up the corpse and getting it ready for the incinerators. Its body couldn't be disposed of in any other way that wouldn't harm the earth they were presently inhabiting. The single thing taken from it was a small sample of blood for their archive and to feed its DNA to an algorithm that calculated their destinations. The medic will be with you shortly to help you with your recovery, Michelle said and finally left. 
Giles exchanged a few words with the others and grinned at Felix, who was still scrunched up in the corner of his chamber. Then, he too left him with the cleanup crew. Several hours later, and with many patches of sedatives glued to his shoulders, Felix had arrived at the main deck to meet Giles and the rest of the team. He was wearing his bright red multifacic suit at this time. Simone chuckled when she saw him. You're not fooling anyone wearing that, friend, Giles said playfully. The other humans were fooled, weren't they? No one besides the likes of you noticed me in the other universe. Felix was convinced that he was right. Those humans didn't notice a lot of things. The homeless on their streets, violent crime happening in front of them, the end of their universe. Simone returned. It's up to you if you want to use them as your reference point. She turned and walked away toward the main hatch of the ship. Michelle was grinning as she passed by him and followed Simone. Felix felt like a clown. Giles came up to him and patted him on the back. Let's leave that here and fit you with a weapon instead. I don't know how to operate a weapon. Any weapon. I'm a scientist. I'm a scientist too. But you don't see me walking around in a red suit thinking myself invisible. Giles couldn't help himself. He wanted to milk the suit thing as much as he could. He had been watching Felix trot alongside them in his bright red suit for ten years without saying a word about it or acknowledging it in any way. But Felix was a proud man. He wouldn't relinquish his suit for the second time just because a few people thought of it as useless or even laughable. He pranced out of the ship in his last remaining piece of home, apart from the camera that he had left behind this time. That one truly was rendered useless, its battery was depleted. The other thing on his person when he stepped foot on the new Earth, the one he couldn't convince Giles against, was a small canister of tear gas strapped on his thigh under his suit. Watch your step, Giles quipped, already a few meters ahead of him. Seems this world had its own little apocalypse. The universe itself is holding though, for now. Felix looked onward past the harsh shadow that the ship was casting in front of them, and saw a new planet in shambles. The buildings that were visible through the porthole of his chamber were just ruins. The sky had turned from a pale blue to a warm gray in the few hours since he last saw it, and there were already dark storm clouds above. He was hoping for some sunshine and greenery after the darkness he'd been through, and not devastation. So were the rest of the Doomers, mostly Michelle. He could tell she was irritated, so he quickened his step and joined her at the front of the team. Felix felt he owed her another thanks. I just wanted to say- I was hoping we'd find another clean one. She interrupted. Clean one? Felix asked. An Earth that's not toxic. Michelle answered gloomily, speaking like a true Doomer. Before you panic, this air is breathable. It's just highly polluted. Hell for our onboard filtration systems. We won't be able to stay much longer even if we wanted to. These people don't know what they've ruined, what they've lost. Even if their universe does crumble around them, it wouldn't matter. Felix was stumped. He sighed deeply and wanted to reply, less in the mood somehow, but she continued. Clean ones are getting harder to find. Not counting the hostile universes like the one before, very often, we come across Earths that had been demolished by their own citizens. Her voice was deep and sorrowful. Have you and your people not had the same impression? Er, uh, I, well, we get sent to places that are, as you say, clean. He paused, realized his privilege, realized also how sheltered he had been. So much so that even pivotal information had been hidden from him by his institution. All of that technology that they had possessed in his home universe was only ever used to gather information and enrich their understanding. What a cold life, he thought. What riches squandered. He was taken over by emotions. His heart was oversimplifying what his mind had learned. I wonder, he spoke, even though Michelle was already a few paces ahead of him. I wonder, I said. 
He repeated louder. If we can program your algorithm to take us to my Earth, my universe. Maybe he could share what he had with these people who had already been very generous with him. Michelle stopped, and so did the others when they heard his attempt at heroism. Felix stood in the middle of a grimy puddle in his red suit, unaware of the complexity of his question. Giles was looking at him in surprise. Simone crossed her arms and raised an eyebrow with scorn. You would risk destroying your universe? Michelle eventually asked. That didn't occur to him. The burden of the doomers still hadn't settled in his mind. Simone's scanner beeped, and she quickly checked the readings. We're not alone, she said, interrupting what could have become a very unpleasant conversation. The other two doomers immediately held their plasma weapons until Simone showed them the direction of the biosignature. Human, male, poor condition, she added. Giles took a few fast steps toward the remains of an antiquated car where she was pointing while the rest held their positions. Suddenly, the man sprang up from behind the vehicle, holding his arms in the air as if surrendering. He was smothered in dust and filth, with a long, raggedy beard, a beanie lowered almost to his eyes and covered with scraps of material around his body instead of real clothes. I've been waiting for you, he blurted out. His voice sounded familiar to all of them, but only Simone had figured out why. Giles almost dropped his weapon. Felix wanted to reach for his tear gas, but halted when he heard the rest of what the man had to say. How do you speak our language? Michelle asked from the back. I have been visited before, he answered, grinning. I know that you come from another Earth, another reality. The man pointed in the distance where the top of their ship was still visible from their vantage point. Michelle and Simone exchanged glances. Giles lowered his weapon as the man came up from behind the vehicle and stopped just next to him. Michelle still kept her eye on him through her scope for a little longer. My name is Zosimos. I am a great scientist, <laughs> he said and giggled like a child. Come on, come with me where it's safe. The hunters will soon be out for flesh. Zosimos added and immediately started walking in the opposite direction of the ship. The three of you look like you need a bit of rest and a nice cup of tea, he added, expecting them to follow immediately. Three? Giles whispered, and all of them turned to look at Felix in his bright red, multifacet suit still standing in the puddle where they last saw him. He shrugged his shoulders. He told them his suit worked. The three doomers walked just behind Zosimos as he went rambling, taking them further away from their ship. To be on the safe side, Simone had already alerted their people that they were making a detour from their pre-planned path with one of the locals. Felix was straggling far enough behind them so that he wouldn't alert the man of his presence. They wouldn't know if they would need a surprise tactic of their own if they were being led into an ambush. So Felix remained hidden from Zosimos' sight. About two hours later, they arrived at what looked like the entrance of an underground bunker. Security measures protecting it from some kind of toxin had once been in place, but presently, the little construction looked like the only measure it was going for was secrecy. By Zosimos' account, that was the only thing currently needed in this world. It wasn't rampant toxicity that worried him like it did his ancestors, but what that produced in the people that survived. Zosimos suddenly stopped before taking them inside. But none of that will matter soon, not when the dream is over. He chuckled when he saw the confused expressions of the doomers. Come on, let's go get some tea, I'll explain, he said, then rushed down the narrow staircase, disappearing deep underground. Michelle and Simone both looked at Giles. They knew he wouldn't hesitate to follow. After a small argument between them, if they should walk into an underground bunker where they could potentially lose comms with their ship, all turned to Felix. 
He was stunned that they would ask for his input again when he almost got them killed in the previous reality. But he was one of them now. There was no way around it. I'm curious who visited him. Could it have been one of yours? He said after a moment. I've never come across information about this earth in my reading at the Institute. Simone eyed him. She was curious how he hadn't recognized the voice still or anything else about the man. Might have been. Michelle answered. I don't see what good that would do us. The only thing we need to know is that they also decided not to stay here. She was getting flustered. He didn't say that they left, Felix pressed. How about this? We follow him inside and hear him out. But one of us stays out here. And in case there's trouble, our invisible man can alert the lookout for backup. Giles tried for a midway solution. Michelle, you can be on the lookout. What about those hunters he mentioned? Simone was skeptical of the plan. Giles looked down and sighed. Then we all go. I have my plasma. I'll manage. And if it gets too much, I'll join you down there. Michelle agreed to stay. She always would agree with Giles in the end. She felt like she owed him for saving her life a long time ago. They had a long history together of scouting uncharted Earths. Felix was already walking down the staircase before Giles and Simone could even make a step. Those patches on his shoulders were doing their job well since he wasn't exactly the bold and brave type that would walk into darkness first. When they all disappeared following the footsteps of the local, Michelle crouched behind a small shrub next to the entrance to hide and informed the ship of their situation. The staircase was a long, straight downward path to a single small room, lit only by candles. Whatever had happened on this earth, it left these people without electricity and with little use of any technology they might have produced. From the looks of the bunker, it was a dire existence. Filth, grime, and metal rust even more severely than the Doomer ship, with piles of old plastic parts of electronics chucked to the side like trash. Zosimos had his back turned to the entrance and was riffing through the mounds of old and dusty notebooks. I was sure it was here, he spoke to himself. The one, the single one where I noted what my visitor said. Ugh, I knew I should have made a copy. You seem to recall a lot on the way here. Simone quipped when they finally entered the room. Zosimo sighed and stopped searching. <sighs> I'll make tea. He sounded disappointed. You make yourselves at home. Apologies for the mess. He suddenly opened a hidden door to another room and walked in with a candle, its fire whooshing from his movement. I'll be just a minute. His voice echoed back into the main room through the even narrower staircase that led to the second one. A pungent smell traveled up as soon as he opened the door. Felix thought about how lonely this man must have been since it looked like he was the only one living there. He could relate. He glanced at Giles and Simone and thought for a moment that he was glad that he had them, no matter the circumstances. No one was waiting for him back in his home universe, apart from a few unread articles and a cubicle room in the Institute's lodgings smaller than his chamber on the ship. He hadn't the status to be given a whole apartment. Simone was looking through the old junk in the room and came across some sketches and portraits done with charcoal on loose paper. She looked shocked as she glanced up at Felix, who was lounging around the main entrance, careful not to disturb anything. How many of you are there? She said under her breath, then quickly hid the sketch below a few others that didn't look quite as disturbing. Find anything? Giles asked her quietly, stepping close to her and looking down at the sketches. Huh? That looks like a sketch of a ship. Do you think that was what he was talking about? Perhaps. She sighed. Or maybe he's just mad. We're all a little mad, aren't we? Zosimos was grinning as he was coming back from the second room with a tray full of cups. I'd invite you to sit, but as you see, he motioned with his head around the room, which had a single chair next to the overstuffed desk. Maybe the lady? I prefer to stand, thank you. Simone responded as she took the cup he was offering. 
The tea smelled awful. Even Felix squinted when he got a waft of it in his suit from the other side of the room. And Giles was sipping as soon as the cup reached his hand, unbothered by what it might contain. Ayahuasca. Pardon? The tea. My personal decoction of vines, which still seem to grow despite the conditions here. My great-great-great-grandmother had planted them at the main house when she came back from the Americas to the old continent before everything was destroyed. Simone turned up to look at Giles, who had already finished the cup. His expression could only be described as a little worried, and Felix was doing his best not to burst out laughing. But the Doomers have had more potent psychotropics than DMT. Nothing Giles couldn't handle, or so he thought at first. I find that it opens up the mind, Zazimo said, plopping himself down in the single chair, then took a big gulp from the stuff. With what I have to tell you, I thought you might use a little help. You are mad, Simone snarled at him. So, do you want to know about my visitor? Or are you going to continue insulting me and my ways of coping with my wretched life? Zazimo snarled back. I mean, I have my research to occupy my time, but as you might have read in your scans, there isn't much of it left. Felix felt an ache in his stomach. What he heard about this man, this stranger from a strange earth, reached him on some deeper level. I apologize. Simone barely uttered her eyes lowered to the ground. Please, tell us what you have learned from your mysterious visitor. She glanced at Felix unnoticeably. Giles was changing colors already, but he was grinning. Zazimos was looking at him and studying his face, waiting to see the moment when the ayahuasca would hit. It was about 10 years ago. I found him very close to where I had found you. Giles coughed and he paused. Not yet. He was battered and tired, abandoned by his own people, he said, driven away more like it. He took another gulp from the tea. I didn't know what to do, so I decided to take him back here. I couldn't leave him to the hunters, always on the lookout for fresh meat, whatever kind they can find. Once we were up on the little hill that we passed on the way as well, I turned back and I saw his ship. One minute it was there, and the next, poof, it disappeared. The ship was conspicuously similar to yours. Simone gasped. Enormous, ugliest thing I've seen in my life, and look at where I live. It is ugly. Giles cackled. Simone rolled her eyes and crossed her arms. Too many on board was what he said. Not enough in the reserves, so they left him here. Zazimos turned to Simone once he noticed that Giles had that little spark in his eye that he was looking out for. However, that wasn't the reason they left him. It took some time to learn his way of speaking, and more than a few cups of my tea to get him talking, but he eventually gave in and told me why he was treated so abysmally by your lot. Not us. Giles had to clarify. He was beginning to feel chatty himself. He's right, Simone interrupted quickly. We've never left anybody behind, living or otherwise, much less on purpose, though ours is not the only ship of its kind. Oh, interesting. Zazimo slumped lower in his chair, holding his cup close to his nose as if he liked the horrid smell of the tea. A few moments passed in which he was looking around the room, clearly feeling the effect of his drugs. Before I continue, tell me, can you see a red blurry figure in the entrance? He asked Simone. No. Yes. Giles blurted. Felix froze. He couldn't breathe. Mm-hmm. Zazimos eyed Simone. She kept her eyebrows raised at him as before, without a single tell that she was lying. Well, my visitor, a man of great intellect and bearing, told me something outrageous, unbelievable, Mad, as I'm sure you would say. He snickered. <sighs> Get to it, man. Simone was losing her patience. No need for theatrics. First, he said that this is not the only universe, that he comes from a parallel place, another Earth, very similar to this one, but with certain key differences. 
Zazimos paused and took another glance around the room. But I'm sure you know that already. Nothing outrageous about that information for you. I, on the other hand, had a hard time believing him, took a few of these cups for myself before I could really open up to what he was telling me. He smiled and sipped from the drink a little more, almost finishing his cup. Then he turned towards the entrance and smiled. Yes, quite a few cups. Felix shivered in response to his look. He didn't know if the man could see him or if the psychotropics had taken effect making him seem more knowledgeable than he was about his presence there. To be honest, there was a lot about his appearance that had already been quite the substantial proof of what he was saying. Zazimo stood up from the chair and moved closer to Simone, rifling in the little pile of loose paper sketches next to her. Hmm, yes, here it is. He lifted the same sketch that Simone had tried to hide. Look at his face. Look at my face. It's the same, isn't it? He asked her. Giles wanted to peek, but he could barely stand, so he remained in place, propping himself up on a mound of notebooks, straining his neck over Simone's shoulders. He couldn't see much of the portrait. Can hardly tell, she responded. There's quite the difference between your personal aesthetic and this, Simone sneered. Besides, how do I know that this isn't a self-portrait? Giles staggered back and mumbled. A doppelganger? I guess you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Zazimos chuckled, then started coughing so badly <coughs> that if he didn't sit down with Simone's help, he would have surely dropped to the floor. When his fit was finally over, he continued. How else would I know your language? We've met others that have come to it independently of us. Simone said, coldly, even though she believed every word he was saying. Right. Zazimo scoffed at her, then finally finished the last sip of his tea and relaxed back on his chair again. The second thing? The second thing, she asked. Zazimos rolled his eyes and then stared into hers. The second thing is the reason why my visitor was abandoned in my world. Zazimos laughed again and began murmuring a little to himself, completely incomprehensible to Simone or any of the others. This prompted Felix to wonder why they were wasting their time in this reality with a madman who might as well have been recounting his fever dream to them. But Simone looked serious and attentive. He wanted to see the damned sketch. Is Doppelganger from one of our own? Giles was murmuring, like a drunkard in Simone's ears. How could they have abandoned him? That's against all our principles. They voted him out. Zazimos heard his slurs. Voted him right out of the ship to stay here and die. So he's dead. When did he die? Simone asked, looking around realizing that apart from the portrait, there was no sign of him anywhere in the bunker. Just a few years after he arrived, Zazimos lamented, as if speaking about a close friend. He had the same malaise that I have in my stomach. It just didn't take its time with him. Might have been the exposure to my world that sped it up. Felix gasped and elicited Zazimos's complete attention. The madman peered in his direction, and the multiversal traveler was sure that he could see him now. It's in all of our genes, I suppose. Our mother went from the same thing. Awful. Across the multiverse, countless me's connected by disease. He continued glumly, speaking to the red blur standing at the entrance. What is the second thing that your visitor told you that made his people chase him away? Simone pushed Zazimos for the answer they all wanted. Did, had they understood why? Ah, that's what you want to know. The most pressing question of your species. Zazimos turned back to a surprised Simone. Yes, he told me about that too. The doomed he called your lot. Doomed forever to ride the endless cycle of the apocalypse. But why? He didn't know. Simone scowled and pushed a few of his notebooks on the floor in anger. She expected too much of the dying madman. Giles hadn't moved from his spot. He had finally grabbed the portrait and was looking at it surprised, 
glancing back at Felix, then at Zazimos. He didn't know, Zazimos continued, why your people were doomed in such a way. However, he waited for Simone's attention to return to him. He had understood a truth greater than that one, a truth that may as well render all your pain and suffering even more useless in the grand scheme of the multiverse. In fact, I think that each collapse that you witnessed wasn't your fault at all. Zazimos grinned a little maliciously. We never thought it was. Oh, but you did. You do. I think you always have if I understood my visitor correctly. We all want to hold a little control over our miserable fate, even I, yet there was nothing I could do to stop what was going to happen to me. Zazimos sat up. That's a little defeatist. Simone's tone was a little raised. Like Felix, she too was beginning to think that the man could only offer ramblings and nothing more. Even if that control comes as a fault of our own making, we build entire ideologies around it, structure cultures on it. Zazimos could tell he was losing her attention and kept glancing behind her at Giles and his strange reaction to the sketch. At least we did here. I would go so far as to guess you weren't that different from us. Felix was listening to Zazimos go on about his theories of how humankind was structured. He wasn't sure if he shared his opinion or if he could make any statement so grand about humankind at all. The Institute of Multiversal Anthropological Studies had its own bad ideas, but none were as definitive as Zazimo seemed to imply his view was. The multiverse is a big place, Felix thought. There must be many more of us out there that don't succumb to the same principles of being. Let me tell you, Zosimos, Simone growled. I've met many like us, not one or two. I've even met my doppelgangers from different universes and buried some of them as you have. But never have I dared to think that we are all the same and with no charge over our fates. Who are you to think that you can make such observations from your little bunker sitting here cozily well past the expiration date of your world? Simone said what Felix was thinking. Not me, him. Zazimos met her rising temper with another grin. Unlike me, he was the much-traveled kind. He had seen many things which I had not, researched many universes that I couldn't have even imagined if I hadn't found him on my doorstep. It was him that told me, him that explained how and why we even exist. We're leaving. Keeping us here with your story is beginning to feel much like a sad attempt at any kind of company. Simone didn't pull any punches. Leave. Do as you will. Zazimo scoffed and stood up. He pushed Simone aside and yanked the portrait out of Giles' hands. It's Felix. Giles whispered out, but no one heard him. Simone grabbed his arm and began pulling him toward the entrance, leaving Zazimos next to his piles of dirt and paper. Hear only this before you leave. He spoke without turning. Life is but a dream. Simone rolled her eyes and motioned to Felix to start walking up the staircase. A dream so rich that it had created not one, but endless universes. A dream of a creature so vast and incomprehensible that it is so difficult to even believe real. Not a god, not a man, not a being of any interpretation, for its interpretation depends on that which lies beyond the multiverse. An entity born, as are we, through not of our reality, not of a universe, but above them all. Zazimos had found his notebook and was reading from it, word by word, as his doppelganger, a doomer from another group, had once said it to him. I should have known it was going to turn in this direction. Simone murmured to herself. Maybe they left him because he was mad? Giles slurred quietly, stopping Simone at the entrance. The ancestors had done that way back. And we stopped for a reason. Go. Up. Move. And we are all but humunculi in its dreams, where it sees itself and its many thoughts in us as they appear in its sleeping state. If it is ever to wake, 
We are to be no more. Not any of us. Not any place. Not ever. Zazimos' voice echoed from the second staircase, coupled with his footsteps. The hidden door slammed shut before Simone could turn back and answer him. She sighed, then pushed Giles up the staircase. It's Felix. He repeated, slurring his words. I know. What was? Felix was hurrying in front, barely able to hear what they were saying, and much less what Zazimos had said at the end. Once they reached the surface, night had already come, and Michelle was nowhere to be found. Simone told Felix to hide Giles back down on the staircase while she looked for her. My friend. Giles whispered to Felix. In the red suit and with the beard. He smiled at him awkwardly from the shadows. I think that tea was a bit too strong, even for you. Felix returned. I was confused too when I met my first doppelganger. I double from another world. Giles continued slurring. Afraid too. You know what they say. Felix wasn't even listening. He was looking out of the bunker, waiting to see a glimpse of Simone and Michelle in the darkness outside. There were sounds of distant fire and a few flashes of plasma reflecting in the nearby puddles. He was worried and tensed, yet Giles continued rambling. When you see your double, you'll die. It was an ambush. The hunters were waiting for me. Simone's voice cracked on comms, interrupting Giles. Head towards the ship immediately. Do not wait for us. Repeat, do not wait. Michelle is dead. Michelle! Giles yelped, pressing heavily on his comms badge. We're coming to get you. Felix could barely hold him in place so he wouldn't run off in the distance and leave him behind. There was no response from Simone, only static. Seconds later, more fire was heard in the distance, coupled with flashes of plasma. Giles and Felix had moved out of the staircase and were trying to understand where the sound came from. Everything was silent for a moment after that. Then, they heard howls and yelling in a strange language from the darkness beyond the first line of ruined buildings. The hunters were coming for them as well. The two had no choice. They weren't in any condition to fight. One was drugged out of his mind, and the other only had a small canister of tear gas strapped to his thigh and no fighting experience. They had to leave Simone, if she was even alive, and head to the ship, which was at least two hours away. Felix had to drag Giles most of the way there, as he fought and struggled with him at every step. He feared administrating one of the patches to calm him because he didn't know how they would react to the drugs that were already in his system. An hour into their retreat, it was Giles' turn to get clonked over the head. His insistence to go back for Simone and Michelle was becoming a problem. So, Felix smacked him with a rock and literally had to drag his unconscious body back to the ship for more than a few kilometers. Two hours became three, then four. The fact that Felix had to stop and hide Giles every once in a while when he would hear the savage hunters behind them made the journey back even longer than expected. He would shove Giles into ditches or hide him inside buildings that might have had even worse things waiting for them lurking behind the walls and around corners. But Felix wasn't thinking about his situation. Never before had he been in a position to make such a retreat, never had to run from hungry cannibals to a ship that was probably as old as the institution that sent him out into the multiverse in the first place. He ran on instinct. He felt like an animal. He was an animal. After who knows how many hours spent in the dense ruins of what used to be a city on this earth, Felix finally trekked up the hill which they passed on their way to the bunker. He was aching for a glimpse of the ship to let him know that everything was going to be all right. Felix couldn't even process the loss of Michelle and Simone, but he had to save his new friend. It was the only clear thing on his mind. He left the unconscious Giles at the base, hiding him in a little ditch. Felix wanted to make sure that they were on the right path before dragging him over the hill as well. 
The sun was already rising, and Felix could see the landscape more clearly. Just behind him lay the ruins which he and Giles had passed over the night. Everything looked quiet and calm. He couldn't see the group of hunters that were following them the entire time. They must have given up, he thought, then turned in the other direction, expecting to see the top of the ship. Suddenly, the ground began to shake, and the earth underneath his feet felt soft, like quicksand. Felix looked up at the sky again. It was beige, light beige and paling. The sun hadn't come up. The universe was collapsing. He turned to the ruined city again and saw human specks levitating in the air above. Felix remembered what he had seen before and imagined the faces of the people that must have lived there in hiding as dreamy, somewhere between life and death, unaware that they were being erased. Zazimos must have been somewhere between those people, being dreamed out of his reality, his pain fading into complete obscurity. The ruined buildings were being plucked out of the ground, brick by brick. The dance macabre had begun. It was deafening. And over it, the alarm that would signal the end times blared from the Doomer ship, whose top was peaking not that far from the hill. Felix had learned nothing and experienced much, though it was dubious if he would ever find a way back to his universe to share those experiences with his own people. Attention, this is not a drill. Collapse imminent. Evacuation underway. Attention. Hey, sci-fi horror fans. It's John. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this story, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thank you to all our official supporters of the channel. Craving another scary story? Click on that video on your screen. Until next time, everyone, and remember, stay cosmic.